Hey guys, how's it going? Happy Tuesday. You lose track of what day it is when we do all our comic shows. But today is the show where we talk about the new comics that have come out. So my name is Megan. This is Andy and Jason. And we're from Infinity Flux in Chattanooga. Um, we're going to go over all the stuff. we got a minute to read a few of these here. So we're going to tell you all about it. There's just a few. <laughs> we're, a we're, we're not trying to hide behind this wall of comics. <laughs> I was about to say. It's just, I am. It's, there's just a like lot a, of new things out. It's finally. like a fort. So, yeah, if you guys, as you're getting on, um, send us a comment. Let us know you're watching. Let us know what you're most excited about reading this week. And if you have any questions about any of the books, uh, feel free to ask because we may answer them. We're going to not be, not give any spoilers out, but we will still happily talk to you about what's here. Yep, this is our no spoilers review of these books. We took a, <laughs> we took a break. Each of us read two of them at least. And uh, now we are going to talk about them. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, like I said, look, we're going to go over, just real quick, what we're going to be talking about. We already so. have a death metal comment. I'm not surprised. <laughs> the death metal book just looks so good. Yeah, I know. Like the covers. It's so shiny. Uh, okay, so just real quick, we're going to talk about which ones we're going to go over. I'm going to be doing I Wolverine 2020 and Giant Size X-Men Magneto. What are you going over, Andy? I am doing <laughs> one of the big ones this week, uh, Death Metal number seen. two. <laughs> I'm having to think in reverse. There, there's the main cover. I also got to read uh, Engine War. I know we talked about yeah, it on our uh, Friday show a few weeks ago. And I haven't completely read it, but I skimmed through Rob Liefeld's Snake Eyes. So. Cool. And I'm going to be going over Betty Page, number one, <laughs> who I looked the opposite of today because I didn't get ready at all. And Spider Woman number two. So these are available while supplies last. If you guys have a full list with us, we love you. And you already have these in your box if you've requested it. But if you want to get anything that you see or we go over here, just let us know and we will hold it for you while supplies last. If you want to set up something, just send us a message and we'll hook you up. Yep. Who goes first? Um, you decide. No, I, I guess I'll, I'll go first. We'll go. We'll go this way. Okay. okay. Sounds good. So um, I sat down, and the first one I read, I read Giant Size X Men Magneto, mm -hmm. uh, which is by Jonathan Hickman with the art by Perez. Uh, they brought their A game. That's what I'll say. It was mm -hmm. not a throwaway issue. Without spoiling too much, uh, Magneto, his powers—they're very relevant everywhere, right? <laughs> uh, pretty much in space, all over the planet. Well, what about the part of the planet that is underwater? How Ooh. useful are his powers mm -hmm. there? Uh, so I didn't see that coming, and it was really cool. Uh, there's some discoveries. There's only three actual characters in the comic, wow. but that let Hickman really focus down on those characters and what they're up to. Um, I can't remember. The, the issue has a title to it, something about waiting and I felt by the end of the issue, this has set something up that I, I don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But this has set up something that feels important. Yeah. Um, something happens in it. Uh, so <laughs> any questions for, for these always. two, for, this, for you two who have not read it? Are you talking about I, Wolverine? No. Oh, uh -uh. See, I was sharing the video. I didn't even pay attention. Look how I'm Giant sure. size X-Men Magneto. Okay. So in Magneto, he's a... I feel like a really important part of the X-Men series right now. Yeah. And his position. Is that brought up of like what he's actually doing? No, he's actually stepped away in this issue. Mm -hmm. He's doing his own thing. Um, you know, because I know what you mean. He's become almost like de facto leader, mm -hmm. except when Professor X sticks his head out and says, do this, and then yeah, they all his, do that. Yeah, weird helmeted head. Um, yeah. No, this is definitely a departure for him. He is working with and for someone else, sort mm. of, as a favor. And they're up to something. And, you know, even though you see them plotting, you don't get to hear all the plots. Yeah. So you're in on it, yet you don't quite know. feels like all of these are going to culminate in something where everybody's just going to just... Everyone has their own side. And, and it's funny, they're doing something, and then as he goes... Uh, underwater, mm -hmm. I've already revealed that. Uh, <laughs> other secrets come out, like stuff he wasn't even ready for sort of mm. happened. So uh, good, very good one shot. Um, I, I've kind of enjoyed all these. I like this one more than some of the other ones, honestly. Um, so let me skip over to I, Wolverine. So uh, I, Wolverine 2020, yes, it follows uh, everyone's favorite Android version of Wolverine, Albert. 
Albert. His name gets said. Yep, good, he's good. called. Yeah, he 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 he's, uh, quote unquote meets his maker. And his <laughs> oh, maker uh, calls him Albert. <laughs> No, no discussion on why. I mean, maybe I think that it's was... for Albert Einstein. Okay. Is what I read back when I was reading some history of Albert. You know, if I was going to name somebody after, you know, Albert Einstein, I'd probably call him Einstein. Yeah, yeah that's just me. <laughs> the Albert part isn't the, uh, the part amazing part of the name. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, it was over the top. Um, it was <laughs> crazy. I mean, if if you want to read a comic where somebody takes an android's head and throws it at someone. And it bites the person's ear. Duh. Uh, th yeah. <laughs> th th this issue is for you. The dialogue was over the top. Every it's it's a uh, comic book over the top. It turned up a bit. Mm -hmm. um, this is a two parter, by the way. So even though this one sort of resolves, there's more mm -hmm. that's coming after this. He's on a quest. People try to mess with him. Guess how well it goes for them? I mean, he's Wolverine and an android. <laughs> <laughs> So does it tie in? Do you have to have known anything about the 2020 so, Iron Man storyline? Yeah, the that's answer, not an the answer is no. Okay. In fact, okay. they address that. Somebody even mm -hmm. like kind of says, "Hey, what about all that stuff?" And he's like, "I'm doing my own thing." <laughs> oh, good. In so many words. So. Okay, cool. Basically, just because he's a robot, and they're like, and he's 2020 adjacent. And he, he correct. And he he really has his own quest. They explain what it is and they explain why he's on it, which is history for the character. Mm -hmm. Um and so it you, you're not reading it wondering, well why is he doing what he's doing? Okay. It's, it's all made pretty clearly. And then there's some some crazy battles, Android heads being thrown around. <laughs> uh there's okay, I don't know if people like this or not. Some people like this more than others. But the writer tries to write in accents mm -hmm. and some of it made me laugh. Uh, that, that's what I'll say. Oh, you, uh, like, how, how do you write the accent now. of like a real little girl? <laughs> so, you know, like, like yeah. sorry, Mr. Wolverine. Like, how <laughs> how do you write that out phonetically? Wolverine. You'll have to you'll have to open the issue to find <laughs> out how he wrote that. And uh, if you guys are curious, unlike our Sunday show where we show off high dollar items, uh, these are all just cover price. Unless we say otherwise, we are going to show off a one in twenty five death metal later. The, D these... the DC is out today. Everything else is out tomorrow. Yep, mm -hmm. but they're all just cover price. And if you uh, have a pull list with us, you do get 10% off anything you pull. And tell us what you want. We'll grab it aside today. With my greasy fingers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, I want to hear about death metal. <laughs> oh, boy. How, what do you say about death metal that is not just, well, uh, uh, the world is completely shaken up because of, no, it's... This is a, I would, I would have never thought the issue one was really much of a, like, setup setup. You know, it didn't feel like a slog to get through. Yeah, right. Uh, it felt really well paced and everything. Then you get to this one, and it is like, every page is like something happening that's crazy. <laughs> uh, as you can imagine, like, uh, I feel like, I guess we can spoil a little bit of issue one now, just that yeah. it started out with like Sergeant Rock. Right. And you're like, okay, this is not what I expected. This one has another thing that's very much like that. And then just from there, every page is like, what? What are you doing? It's, I think it's been said that there is a version of Batman in the multiverse that is the Batmobile. And he does, about that. he does play a part in this. Oh my God. I forgot what his name is. It's okay, not good. Like, good, he has a name. It's like, <laughs> it's not Batmobile, but it's like, I don't know, like, Batcar or something. It's really weird. Um, this has way more of those things. And uh, I won't spoil that there was deaths in the first issue. In this one, there's a lot more. Okay. And uh, does, does it confirm... Anything from the first issue? Yes, okay. which I know what you're referring to. Right. Uh, it's it's confirmed, but that character is not going to go away quietly. Okay. Um, to the point of, uh, like, oh wow, you you did something really big. Um, oh, it's so hard not to. <laughs> Let's say uh, when Scott Snyder did this series, he said. Uh, it's going to tie into everything. Uh, and definitely one of those things is uh, Doomsday Clock. Huh. 
I mean, the first issue already did. So. It yeah. did, and this one, um, it does not hide anything of its relationship to the Watchmen universe. Interesting. Which uh, I found crazy, and um, what they do with that is, is Here, a whole Here's hoping thing. they bring back Mime and Marionette, two characters. I we'll feel see. like yeah. they, they, you know, in Doomsday Clock, they set them up to be something, uh -huh. and then Jeff Johns is like, oh, I'm too busy, you know, yeah. and I'm going to... So, so ask me questions about it, because that's the best way I can not right. spoil something. Uh, okay, so um, is there more on Batman's Undead Army? Yes. Uh, I'll just say you find out okay. how he gets them. Okay. And it's there's a new element, a new place, that apparently was around before the world got shook up that we've never heard of before. Mm -hmm. But if you wonder, if superheroes die, do you just bury them out in like you know a normal <laughs> cemetery or something no they may actually have a certain place they take them interesting huh. uh which i found super interesting that's what i think about this death metal right now is every time they show me a location i'm like that's really cool that's a super like i want to know more stories about that spot so that's what's going to be my question i had read a spoiler somewhere that there were new lo not a first appearance but a first appearance of a location uh-huh so yeah I think that might be what you're A location to. that has a name and everything. Of course, it's a cool, kitschy name. Which opens the doors to uh -huh. being new, all sorts of things. There's so. there's some, I'll say, some new old characters. Hmm. Um, some people we haven't seen in a while. And there is maybe a first appearance of, if you like the Batman Who Laughs, um, there may be a few more things like that character. Uh even amped up to the Batman who uh, chuckles, the Batman who giggles, <laughs> the Batman who chortles. He's my least favorite. <laughs> Batman who smirks, but he doesn't really get it. Yeah. <laughs> Grimace. No, like, this is, I mean, if you're a DC fan, you've got to be reading this because it is just everything. It is everything chalk I, I into think, one book. I, I think every DC fan who comes to our show is reading this. Yeah, so, which is good because that's what it deserves to tell be. Tell us about the variants. The variants? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Uh, I don't know why I said that. Uh, okay, I'm thinking backwards. Let me help okay. you. <laughs> okay. Boop, boop. Okay, there we are. Uh, so first off, we have the really awesome, I got this one because Aquaman's my favorite character, the David Finch uh, Aquaman variant. What they're doing with a lot of these is like, what these characters look like in this universe, they kind of all have a rock star metal um, tone to them. Uh, so we've got this uh, Aquaman, and then we have one that a lot of people are really excited about, which is the, try not to knock everything over, Harley Quinn with her giant hyena. That's an uh, art germ, right? It's the art germ variant. It's a little reminiscent of like a, a little red riding hood with a big bad wolf. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like this version of Harley is in the book. Like, she's... Uh, yeah, she. We saw her in the first. We issue. saw her in the first one. So yeah. yeah, this is this is a new look for her. Um, and then we have the main cover, which is this nice shiny. So nice. The colors. The, the colors are the great. It, it doesn't get across on this super well, but it's it's like a shiny uh, cover. And then that's gonna make me logo, pause right? in back My... issue bins for like years <laughs> yeah. to come. Like this is something. Then we have the uh, Jerome Opinia. Lobo cover, which if you read number one, you know Lobo's, he's up to something, looking for something. Uh, and then... The one in 25. The one in 25, which is crazy cool. This one is $25. Yes, this is 25. And it is Wonder Woman playing her electric harp. Which, we, we only have a few of, the, a few of those, too. Yes. Yeah. So if you want that, it is twenty five bucks. We can stick it in your pool box for you. But yeah, that harp is really nice. Uh, yeah, if you I want to the... hear it. I just think you really want to Ooh. hear what that sounds like. Ooh, it, it <laughs> might it might be hard to tolerate. But yeah, <laughs> if you remember the issue one had um, the Batman. I don't know why I called him the Batman. <laughs> it's like it's like the nineteen forties um, playing guitar now. We have this one. And we wasn't sure if they connect or what it was, but they would look all really cool next to each other. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I figure they connect and just make a band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So we've got somebody asking to hold some Harley and Lobo. I can do that for you for sure. Um, 
And like I said, guys, if you want anything, just let us know. Even if you don't know the name of the artist, just say, I want that really cool Harley variant or that Aquaman variant. We know what Backwards. you're talking about. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. So, yes, I will hold those for you, Michael. Uh, real quick, I'll go over some of the two other things that I got a yeah. chance to read. Uh, this one is really interesting. I remember talking about this on our uh, FOC show mm -hmm. that we do on Fridays. Uh, this is Engine Ward. And... It's really interesting. Uh, it deals with a lot of like human and gods, um, a very almost like Greek uh, pantheon, but they are the uh, astrological signs. I see. And it's a future world, um, future or another planet or something, but there are. Uh, the relationship between the people and the gods, like, they all know the gods exist and they're there. Uh, if they're having a water drought, they have to ask the gods for it. As you can imagine, the gods are uh, kind of uh, full of themselves. Uh, there's a part where they're like, we need water. There, we've been in a drought. And one of the gods is like, look, we've given you all we have. I haven't even filled up my second bath yet. <laughs> um so, yeah, they're kind of jerks, but uh, it's a really interesting uh, take on kind of that um, that pantheon idea. If you're a fan of, like, futuristic, um, not like the hard stuff, not like Blade Runner, but kind of your fantasy where they, they're just giant alien monsters and all that, this is really cool. Um, the art's really good. Joe Eisma, who worked on Morning Glories... Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a it will be an interesting one to check out, and that's from Vault Comics. Uh, and then the other one I read because uh, oh, I didn't read it; I had to skim through it, as you can imagine why. I had to see what it looked like. It is GI Joe Snake Eyes Dead Game by Rob Liefeld. By Rob Liefeld, and yep. so of course I had to um, see what was inside. I uh, kind of skimmed through it. Um, it's exactly what you expect if you're a fan of that, uh, just very 90s, over the top, big muscles, um, <laughs> that Rob Liefeld thing. Uh, there's even a great panel where you see Roadblock, and he is very reminiscent of that classic Captain America, the, ever, the barrel-chested Captain yeah, America. Yeah, yeah, standing sideways. Uh, but it's really cool. It has, uh... Scarlet and Snake Eyes and Roadblock and uh, some new uh, villains, it looks like. Some very interesting looking. Could maybe even be villains in, say, a book like X-Force. Hmm. You know, <laughs> those kind of designs. But I'm, I'm really excited about it. I don't know. I think uh, he's a divisive person, but there's a certain charm if you grew up reading books in the 90s that this really brings it's really um, reminiscent of how that. many how many issues is that going to be do we know i'm not sure if we know quite not sure it's just ongoing so yeah uh, i would guess initially it's maybe, be a i think maybe five sort of, yeah you typically they do like five sort of like what he did with major x yeah I, I think it's it's somewhere around there Straighten all this stuff up, make room for mine. Yeah. When we get to it. So my joke is that Rob Liefeld writes the best Snake Eyes dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, like cool. it's like panel one. He rips off his helmet and does this <laughs> soliloquy. It's like no. They use a bunch of X's in it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. What'd you read? Yeah. Give me your questions. I read Spider Woman. Oh, real quick. At the end of the show, we're gonna go over free comic book day stuff. Yep. We stay have tuned. That in, so stay tuned, because uh, I will be going over that. But first, I read Spider Woman number two, and Betty Page number <laughs> Keep one. Sliding. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this in later. But uh, anyway, I read Spider Woman number two, um, and this is about Jessica Drew. She is very ill right now. Um, I'm gonna try to do non spoilers. So. Uh, if you know Jessica Drew's backstory, she was a sick child. Um, her father um, injected her with some radioactive spider juice. Mm, uh, <laughs> father of the year. <laughs> which gave her her powers. And something is happening to her right now. Um, sort of friendly fire has caused it where she has lost her regenerative abilities. And mm. it's actually making her sick as well. 
So she's kind of on a hunt to find out why, because uh, she's not well. <laughs> she's not doing well. Um, I think the dialogue is really great in this um, comic. The art's great. They do a lot with the panel mm -hmm. uh, structure and layout. It's really inventive. Um, a lot of uh, there's some there's some violence in this one. Very bloody scenes. <laughs> so definitely not a book for kids. Um, but yeah, we do still have some copies of the number one as well. So I was gonna ask. So. It's been a long time since I read the number one, as it has been for everybody. How easy did you find it to yeah. like, Luckily, get into it? Luckily, on the very first page, it does sort of a recap. I'm glad Marvel did this because, yeah, it's been too long since this about, came out. About four months. So so. <laughs> unless you have number one, you're not going to remember. But luckily, they do have a little recap there. So that's super nice. Um, I found it incredibly easy just to get pop it. right into. So. All right, well, I also read Betty Page number one, if any of you are interested in this. So in this, uh, she is doing something that we all wish we were right now, I'm sure, sitting on a beach somewhere. So she's actually a movie star in this issue, and she is traveling to a remote desert island with some other movie stars, and the island is cursed. Um, so yeah, they're trying to make a movie and it's cursed. So this is just super lighthearted, um, fun, light comics reading. I know we particularly have some customers who are like, I read so much dense, heavy mm -hmm. stuff. Occasionally I need something that's just pure <laughs> fluff. And if you need that, then this is the one for you. So my question is what's up with Betty Page? Because <laughs> Uh, the previous series, Betty Page Unbound, mm -hmm. she, all the covers, one, she looked like Red Sonia, one, she looked like uh, Deja Thoris. Um, what what about Betty Page it lends herself to being <laughs> this, like, in one series she was like a super spy? Yeah, uh -huh. that was one before. Yeah, yeah this one. one. I don't know, I think, like, she is just such in the culture mm -hmm. that she, in a way, becomes sort of... Uh, not, I guess superhuman would be the word. Almost like uh, a, the embodiment of that culture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, you're, I think that's I think that's why her name just lends itself. We hear it so much, it's going to be repeated throughout all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so th that is what I read today um, for the show. Garrett says, should I inject my daughters with radioactive spider juice? Can I get that on Amazon? No, but you can get it in our back room. I'll go dig it Ooh. in for you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that sounded too oddly specific. It must be true. <laughs> Um, so yeah, guys, this is just some of the comics that came out today. Just some of them. Yeah. Because there are tons of things that are not making it on the show, like Venom, that are in your pull list. Yes. So. Yeah, we had so many people add Venom to their list <laughs> that we have fleetingly few copies yeah. left. So mm -hmm. I'd like to urge you guys, uh, if there's a book you like and you want to make sure to get it, and I know it's fun to look at the wall, do that too, but please add it to your pull list. It helps mm -hmm. us know how many to order and make yeah. sure that you can get it. Uh, and if you're not local, we ship all over the country. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Let's talk about free comic books. All right, yes. let's get all this stuff out of here. Just throw it around. Uh, throw it up in the ceiling. Okay, so uh, free comic book day is not one day this time. Um, instead, they are just giving us the books week after week and letting us decide when to give them out. What we've decided to do is we've decided to make every Saturday going forth our free comic book day. Woo, so yay! the books were, <laughs> I don't know when to pause for, or to pause for applause. <laughs> um, so the books we're showing you will be available for free this Saturday. There'll be three per person uh, while supplies last. We tend to order quite a bit though. Um, so I think they're setting them up right now to show off what we will have. Uh, I already read the one that you were reading because I had to see that uh, spectacular ending. So yeah, we open at noon on every day. <laughs> um, but yeah, this Saturday, all these comics will be available. Like Jason said, three per person. If you want to scoot the middle out of the way, Jason. <laughs> sure. So doesn't free comic. But here are, and um, so question, there are going to be multiple titles available throughout the summer, right? Yeah. This is mm -hmm. just the first This is the selection. first little wave of them that has come about. I believe mm -hmm. it's going to be for seven or eight weeks. So I think seven or eight yeah. Saturdays in a row. We're giving you one more reason to come by the shop Yeah. yeah. On, a, on a Saturday. And we'll, we'll probably have other specials and other deals as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, you got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, this one was uh, Weirn 
books. <laughs> it's like weird, but like spelled oh, strange. Oh yeah, also spelled uh, weird. Neil Gaiman has uh, some some work in that one. We have uh, My Little Ponies, and we have that. That's the big one. The big one is the X Men book. And I'll yep. tell you, there's more to it than just X Men. We'll get right back. What are you to talking that. about? The big one. The big one is Canuck Beyond and Captain Battle. Captain Canuck comic. <laughs> Show, makes his appearance every year around free comic book day. He does. You forget about him, and then there he is for free again. <laughs> um, so Andy and I both read the X-Men book, and there's some real major thing that happens in it, but it's not X-Men related. Hmm. Right, which I, I found odd. Uh, a lot of the times, too, there's a thing at the very end that um, it's not like part of the story or anything. It's just like, Almost you call it like an ad or something. Um, but like being in this business, I see just about everything that's coming out. Like we, you know, we knew about Empire Correct. a while back yeah. when you all this. Uh, it reveals uh, something new that's coming that I don't think any of us had heard of before. Uh, it doesn't really reveal like. Yeah. It's a new event. It's thing a new event. Yeah. That Marvel has kept secret enough that we have not heard about it. And you'll learn about it mm -hmm. by the end of that X-Men book, even though. It doesn't have to do with X-Men. The first half of it is an X-Men story. The second half is a surprise story. Huh. It's surprising in many ways. Yes. Some, some stuff. Yep. Happens. Andy showed me a panel or two, <laughs> and I immediately had to read it as well. Yeah. It looks pretty crazy. I like when they do that with free comic book day books, where they're really like, uh, let's get this in the hands of everybody, and they can read it, and then be like, now yeah. I gotta go yeah. read whatever this leads into. So you heard it here first. Um, you want to pick this one up this Saturday for free, find out what the next big, uh, really interesting looking Marvel event coming up. Yeah, some questions about it. Um, but yeah, like Jason said earlier, we're doing three comics per person, so bring your family, bring your friends, bring yourself, mm -hmm. and come get some free comics. It is free comics summer, that is the situation. Yep. Every Saturday here, or um, the, as long as we have them, <laughs> and... Uh, we also have our uh, shopping spree still going on, so that's another reason to come out. We have a whole room full of comics that are a dollar each or fill a short box for just 40 bucks. Ends up being like 30 cents a comic, so... Yeah, I brought in another six boxes today. Yeah, it's constantly getting refilled. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we will be planning very exciting things uh, for Saturday, so... Uh, real quick, um, speaking of Marvel event books, Empire number one is out. Oh, yeah. As well. We don't have that here. How do we <laughs> have that here? We must have missed oh. it. But we, we have it. Empire number one is here. It is out tomorrow. Uh, you can finally read it, and I can finally talk about it. With you can some finally know what Jason has beans. been uh, spouting about in his little corner. For and you will see it's not just the Kree and Scroll War. It really isn't. That's just yeah. sort of the beginning. So Empire is also point. out. Um, come get that. Yep. And you can come get your DC stuff today if you want. So that is available. All right. Well, I think that's it. I think that wraps it up. Uh, we got to read the books, preview the books, show off the books. Now come on by the shop and uh, come talk with us about them. Yeah. Yes. Talk about death metal because there's, <laughs> there's stuff in it. I'll be checking that out tonight for sure. All right, guys. Have an awesome rest of your night. We hope to see you on New Comic Day and Saturday for Free Comic Day. Woo! Mm -hmm.